common question that many students raise, especially when they work for the course, uh, with the course for a while, uh, is how they deal with people in their lives, like family members or colleagues at work, uh, who don't share the course's thought system. Uh, and, and perhaps even think that, that the course, the course system, uh, could be, uh, directly antithetical to what they believe, or if they're religious in nature, could be seen as heretical or, or the work of the devil. And how does one deal with, with, uh, uh, with situations like that? And, and this is quite a, a helpful one to kind of discuss. Uh, I've had lots of personal experience with that, uh, having grown up in a Jewish, a family, and, and my parents were both were, were not particularly observing Jews, were very much identified Jews. Uh, 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 my wife Gloria's family, uh, she's, she has two born-agains, a brother and sister. Her brother actually is deceased. Uh, and uh, uh, her, her parents, for, especially her mother, were died, died in the rule, uh, died, died in the world Roman Catholics. So, so we both have had kind of experience with our families as well as, uh, as many of you, starting with, uh, with friends and colleagues. Uh, the important thing is to remember the, 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 the essential distinction that A Course in Miracles makes between form and content. Uh, and this also uh, uh, relates to, uh, to the section in the teacher's manual on the ten characteristics of God's advanced teachers. Uh, the second one, the second of those characteristics being honesty. Uh, and there Jesus makes, the, makes it very clear that he's talking about content and not form. He's saying honesty is where what you say and what you do is consistent with what you think. In other words, if you are right-minded, then everything you say uh, or do would be consistent with your right-mindedness. Namely, it would be, it would be loving, it would be kind, it would be defenseless, uh, it wouldn't be fraught with specialness, uh, and, and you would only say and do what would be helpful. Now, very often, it is not helpful to tell people the actual truth. Uh, in fact, probably the best example of this would be Jesus himself in the Course. He frankly lies. Right? He doesn't tell the truth in form. All right, he tells us that God is lonely without us. He tells us God weeps uh, over uh, our being being absent, being separate. He says God God is incomplete without us. Well, that's not true. Uh, uh, God doesn't even know the, that we left because we haven't left. Uh, God is also talked about as a person. Uh, the masculine pronoun is used to, to denote him. Uh, he's, he's described as having body parts. He has arms. He has hands into whom uh, into which we're supposed to place our future. Uh, he ha- obviously he has eyes and tear ducts because he weeps. So, so obviously these all have to be taken as a metaphor and not literally true. Uh, you, you, you don't want to be what, what typical course students have, 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 have been or have done where you go to a funeral and you tell people, you proclaim to people, well, why are you upset about there is no death? You know, and then you give them the, uh, the, the, the appropriate work questions, uh, to, to read or people, who visit friends who are sick, and they quote Lesson 136, Sickness is Defense Against the Truth. And while well, literally this is true, uh, it is not very caring or loving, and in that sense it is not honest. And so, so what, what, what the world knows of uh, calls white lies, uh, which is where you kind of bend the truths t- to be helpful. So you don't, you don't tell children the absolute truth about things because they're not ready to hear it. Uh, that, that Jesus does that in the Course itself, and, and basically that's the guiding principle that, that we should use uh, to uh, 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 direct our lives, that we want to do and say what would be helpful, not necessarily what is literally the truth. So that if you're with people, for example, who have a, a different thought system than you, or a different religious thought system than you, uh, and, and you don't know them very well, and they're not particularly interested in what you, you believe, what's the point in kind of, kind of flaunting the course in their faces? What's the point of kind of walking around with the blue book ready to kind of strike out against them at a moment's notice? Um, what you want to convince them of is the truth of the course by, by your actions. Uh, I'm fond of quoting a very important line in the text where Jesus says, Teach not that I died in vain, teach rather that I did not die by demonstrating that I live in you. So, so the way we teach his thought system of resurrection, which really is the Course's definition uh, of awakening from the dream, the acceptance of the atonement, uh, the way we teach him, teach his lesson and his love is to demonstrate it. He tells us at the beginning of the teacher's manual that, that learning is demonstra- that teaching is demonstration. 
And so it's demonstrating the love of the Course that, that is really helping people recognize what it says. It's not preaching its gospel word for word. In the YouTube presentation just before this, uh, I discussed how one uh, behaves when in the company of people, uh, friends, colleagues, uh, family, uh, who do not share our, our belief system, and then we, of course, the miracles. Uh, I, I'd like to continue that discussion by, by citing Lesson 184, uh, specifically paragraphs 9, 10, and 11. Uh, I often refer to these when I teach because these are very, very helpful to, uh, to, to in cautioning students not to confuse, as I mentioned in the first part of this, uh, not to confuse form and content. Uh, in those paragraphs, Jesus makes it very clear that we have to use all the symbols of the world, uh, uh, the concepts of the world, uh, uh, not because they're true, but as he says, to proclaim their own reality in forms that the world can accept without fear, or, or something like that. Uh, in, in chapter 2, uh, at the end of uh, section 4, Healing as Released from Fear, Jesus talks about that the value of the atonement does not lie in the manner in which it is expressed. In other words, it's not the form that's important, that you want to you want to convey the message of the atonement, which is that the separation never happened, in whatever way would, would, would not increase someone's fear. And so speaking the literal truth uh, very very often again can only uh, exacerbate someone's fear, not, not reduce it. And remember, the, the key idea, the whole message of the atonement is that the separation never happened. So why would you want to say something or behave in a way that would separate you from other people? That's the question you should always want to ask yourself. Rather, you want to use the differing symbols of the world, the differing thought systems of the world, not to give them a prominence or a power that they don't have. After all, you know, the, uh, the psychotherapy pamphlet says that belief in God is a meaningless concept. It's not the thought system that's important. It's not the belief, not the theology that's important. As Jesus says in the introduction to the clarification of terms, it's the experience that we want, not the theology. And the experience is the experience of love. And the key element in love as it's expressed in this world is that it is non-special. It is non-exclusive. It unifies. It doesn't separate or fragment. So when you're in the company of people who don't share your thought system, why do you want to use the thought system as a way of reinforcing separation? All right. I mentioned, again, in part one, the course's discussion of honesty. Honesty is consistency. So if you're coming from a loving space, which is the space, the holy instant, when one is in one's right mind, in which there is no separation, and that's what Jesus means when he says, at no single instant does the body exist at all. In the holy instant, there is no body because there's no thought of separation. So if that's where you're coming from, which is what everyone's aim ought to be as a student of the Course, then this is what you want to share. And so you want to use, once again, the, the seemingly different, well, not, not seemingly, they are different. Symbols are different. Forms are different. Behaviors are different. Bodies are different. But you want to use the seeming differences or, or the apparent differences not to, not to accentuate the fact that, that you are different. Just the opposite. You want to use these symbols as a way of expressing a joining. And you do this by your defenselessness. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, by, by, by demonstrating that the love of Jesus lives in us. And the way we demonstrate that the love of Jesus lives with us is to exemplify who he was and what, what his message was uh, 2,100 years ago as well as today. And that message is that we are all the same. We appear to be different. We look different, and we have different theologies and different belief systems and different values and different ways of expressing these values. But in the end, we are all the same because we are the same mind. So it is very, very helpful and an extraordinarily, extraordinarily powerful teaching tool to, to use the differentiating symbols as a way of expressing the fact that we are all the same, which means you're not defensive, you don't judge, you don't attack. And it does often mean, as again, as I said in the first part, that, that you tell white lies, that you may even seem to agree with someone. You, know, you don't have to affirm the truth. You want to live the truth. When you affirm the truth, you're differentiating, and you're separating, and you're judging. When you live the truth, you simply love. And love takes whatever form is the most helpful. Just again, in that passage where Jesus says the value of the atonement does not lie in the manner or the form in which it is expressed. It's the content that's most important. 
So you, so you could be with people who may actually think that you agree with them. So, so what? What's important is that you don't want to, you don't want them to feel that you're separate from them. Now this does not mean that there are times when, when, when you don't disagree with someone's point of view, but the point is, but, but the issue then would not be that you want to show that they're wrong and you're right. It just may be appropriate in that circumstance to disagree. And, and, and often it's, it's a very helpful lesson to show people that you can disagree in form, but, but you're still in agreement on the level of content. In other words, you don't use the disagreement as an attack as a way of putting other people down or proving that they're wrong and you're right. So in the end, the whole issue is one of, of leaving the form, the body, the behavior, and going to the content of the mind. That's where the Holy Spirit, where Jesus are, and that's where you want to, to, that's whom you want to join with. And when you join with them, anything you do behaviorally with anyone will have to be kind and loving and defenseless. And that's how you teach the message of A Course in Miracles. <laughs>